All right guys, I just bought a new aerator system for my pond. I've got like a half acre pond here that started accumulating a bunch of algae on it. So I, uh, I read up on some specs online of all these aeration systems for these ponds and started looking up into um, air pumps and the specs that they're they pushing out, trying to figure out you know what was gonna be good for the size of pond that I have. And what I ended up doing was I bought a Blue Diamond ET100 septic air pump. So what it's actually used for is for septic tanks, um, to aerate the tanks and, uh, and all that. But the specs on this blower are as good and, and actually better than what I could buy for an aeration system for the pond at, the, at that price. So I ended up buying the pump for um, $205. Uh, it pumps out 100, I think it said 120 liters per minute of air. I bought 100 feet of weighted hose, um, probably more than enough. But what I plan on doing is I'm gonna run the hose out a little ways out into the pond and now I'm gonna put a tee off and run a diffuser one way and a diffuser the other so I can have two diffusers set up. I bought two of the, um, the 16 inch diffusers to go on this unit. So um, hopefully it'll do the, the trick. I tried it out last night. I went ahead and just put a tee in the end of the hose. I couldn't wait. I uh, just threw the hose in and, and kicked it on, made sure that it was pumping some air, and it, it really is pumping a lot of air. So I think we're gonna be just fine with two diffusers in this pond. Um, and like I said, just, just branching them off. But I had a lot of trouble figuring out, you know, getting information on these uh, setups. So I'm, what I'm trying to do is trying to help somebody else out and try to save a lot of money. The whole package cost me like 420 bucks total, and that's cheaper than what I what I could find. I looked into the Big Max uh, pond aeration systems that they have on eBay, and I almost bought one of them. But the problem that I seen with those, opposed to the septic tank um, pumps, is the the wattage for one. They draw a lot more power, and they're a lot louder than what this pump actually is. And the other thing is they didn't seem to be as durable and last as long from uh, some reviews. You know, I, I haven't personally owned one, so I don't know, but just going from what people are saying that uh, they, they don't last as long as these septic tank um, pumps. So I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm getting ready to dig a trench and lay my hose in the, the trench. It's like 50 foot run from my shed to my pond and then after that I'll uh, I'll show you what I'm gonna do so stick with us all right so I went ahead and dug my trench from my shed down to the pond and laid my hose in it. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut my hose right where it meets up with the water and I'm gonna add a T, a hose T right there. And I decided I would put an um, shut off valve to where it's gonna be. I'm gonna add a, a, a piece of line and then a shut off valve and it'll, it'll stick up above ground level there to where if I ever get any back pressure on this pump, I can let, I can release the back pressure <clears throat> out into the air and just kind of keep an eye on that. If the, the pump's ever, you know, really getting a lot of pressure on it, I can do that. Um, don't want to burn up the diaphragms in it. So I'm going to add that and then I'm going to hook the, the hose onto the other side of the tee to run out to my diffusers. Um, another reason why I'm gonna do this right here at the edge of the pond is if I ever wanna pull in my hose and, and bring it in for um, repairs or uh, for the winter time or whenever, I can just un 
do my hose clamps right there at the edge of the water and just reel in my hose and store it and, uh, and do it that way. It'll make it a little bit easier since I've got this section um, buried. But <clears throat> you don't have to bury your hose. Um, and I'm not even sure if it's recommended, but this is weighted hose that is uh, um, direct bury. You can, it's rated for direct bury. Um, I just, I don't want to hit it with the mower, the weed eater, anything like that. So I just decided I'd uh, just dig a shallow ditch, you know, six or eight inches and throw it in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and start doing my splices, get everything set up. All right. So here's my, my trench here, down to the pond. All right, so this is my pressure release for if there's too much air build up, back pressure in the line, I can just come turn this on to let the pressure off, shut it again. I originally thought that that was going to be a problem. I do not think it's going to be a problem now. Anyways, here's my line. <clears throat> I do not have my diffusers in yet. All right, so this is going to be the end of my my line here. <clears throat> it's going to have one 16 inch across diameter um, diffuser which it, what it is, it's a four foot diffusing line. And then once you connect it to the T, it's a 16 and a half inch diameter. But it's gonna have one of those on either side of here. <clears throat> so like I was saying, my line's gonna run straight from the shed out to the center of the pond. And it's gonna have those two diffusers off of these sitting right out there. Um, once my diffusers come in, hopefully tomorrow, I ordered them online. Um, I'm going to put them on and put it out there and then I will do a, another video and show you guys how it turned out. All right, so here's my setup that I have in my shed. Um, the original owners did not have any power into this shed. I was lucky enough that I have a breaker box off of my service and I just ran a 15 amp breaker with some power up to an outlet and uh, set it up for my pump so I can have it inside the shed here. I've got the pump sitting here. I'm actually gonna put it on like a, a paver or something. That way it's not sitting on any wood. It's not in contact with anything if it gets hot for some reason. Um, but I got my, my power cord here. I've got the, the line hooked up to it, and it's it's pretty quiet, really. I mean, compared to some of the pumps that I've watched videos on, this pump is really quiet. But I've got the pump. It comes with uh, hose clamps, but they're just little spring clamps. I went ahead and put actual hose clamps I put one hose clamp on this because um, it seems like the the fitting that they give you is a little bit smaller than the inside diameter of the the line and it's supposed to be I guess supposed to be um, 0.47s up an inch so it would be less than a half inch is which I'm using on my my hose um, once the diffusers get in I'll hook it up and we can try it out hopefully tomorrow and it'll hopefully help you guys out. Um, I did buy the weighted, I bought 100 feet of the weighted hose, the half inch inside diameter for this pump because it does produce a lot of air and with that extra eighth of an inch inside diameter, because most of them are three eighths, it will help the pump not have back pressure on it. Um, the smaller lines uh, for this pump might produce a lot of back, back pressure. That I don't know, but that's what they're saying. To, they suggested the half inch. I went with the half inch. It cost me another $50 extra for the half inch. So if you think you can get by with 3 eighths, 
you can get that for a hundred dollars for a hundred feet so but anyways I went with the, the weighted because I can actually it's rated for direct bury add a direct bury about 50 feet of it and then once I hit the, the pond I can just drop it in and I won't have to mow around it or nothing so Hopefully tomorrow I have my diffusers and we can set it up and see if it works. All right, so my diffusers just came in the mail today and I went ahead and installed them. Um, it's two 16 and a half inch diffusers um, off of my T and they come with the hose clamps and the T fitting for your hose, but it's a half inch, half inch to a three eighths. And if you went to the half inch line like I done, you have to get you a half inch by half inch by half inch line tee, which is only like 59 cents at the hardware store. So I went with the um, non-weighted diffusers. The only reason why I've done this, they're cheap and they should go <coughs> underneath the, the um, water, but stay off the, the floor of the pond. So that's what I'm hoping for. They should sink down and just kind of raise off the the floor but if I end up running into issues where they're wanting to float up or whatever I'm going to self weight them with something um, I'll figure that out when I run into that issue if I run into that issue I'm hoping though that everything goes as planned they'll sink down and stay you know a few feet off the bottom um, and work for perfect so we'll see what happens I'm getting ready to stretch it out into the center and uh, try it out got my diffusers in and my aerator is working flawlessly so far uh, if you have any questions just leave in, leave them down there in the comments below um, and I'm not a professional if you see anything that I messed up on or any future um, issues that I might have please let me know as well because like I said I just built this kit um, from research trying to trying to save some money and trying to get the best bang for my buck and also the only reason why I made this video is to help somebody else out out there that is or was in the same scenario that I was in looking for a pump that's going to push enough air and um, for an affordable pr price. So like I said, look into the septic air tank um, pumps and I would recommend like a, a hundred liters per minute. Uh, mine's pushing a hundred, 120. Uh, if I were you, and then you can run two diffusers off of it, off of one single hose. Works great. So let me know what you think, and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Thanks.